I prefer the term entrepreneur. Uh, nowadays, I don't necessarily even introduce myself as an influencer or content creator. I say I'm a business person because I am in the business of influence. Let me say it like that. Good content creation is consistent. I will see you on Monday. I will see you on Wednesday. I will see you on Friday. Actually, great content has great impact. It's not rocket science. You don't have to overthink this industry at all. Yeah. And there are people watching. You never know. Just do you because at the end of the day, there are people watching. Whether you think they're watching or not, whether you want them to watch or not, there are people watching what it is that you're doing. And yeah. Just Ivy Africa is a vibe. She's a whole vibe. She's ambitious. She's smart. She's uh bold she's authentic she's driven she's happy she's at peace she's calm and she's an award-winning influencer I, I think i can say the journey has been a blessing with all its uh beauty with all its challenges with all its accomplishments um it's been it's been a blessing i came into this space not knowing exactly what i would evolve to be and i can gladly say that i have transformed not only how people, especially young Africans, especially women, think about money and their finances and their businesses, but I've also transformed how people think about themselves. And I think the best thing for me is that I've transformed how I work and how I think of myself and how I make my money. So started out small, uh, over 25, nobody knew who we were. Hi guys, welcome to our channel. Subscription base of maybe 100 people grew that to tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of people. In that space of four powerful, beautiful, smart women, I found my individual voice. Um, again, I don't know if I can say this was luck or just the universe blessed me at that particular time to, to, to find my space in the niche that is personal and business finance. So when I found my voice, I, I ran with it. And now I can just gladly say I'm, I'm good. I'm good. So the journey has been awesome ups downs but generally awesome it started with um me realizing that we don't talk about money in the way that money should be spoken about and but when i say in the way that money should be spoken about i mean in two ways money conversations are normally very drab and very boring they make you not want to learn them Money conversations, the second thing is money conversations when it comes to women, they're very taboo. It's like, you're not allowed to really talk about it. Uh, you're told, but you have a husband to deal with that. You have a dad, you have a, you know. So I was like, why are people talking about money? I also realized that I was spending a lot of time on Instagram. Instagram has always been one of my favorite social media platforms, but I was spending a long time that was not adding value back to my life. Like, I'm okay looking at beautiful women in their makeup and their hair, and that type of thing. But I, what I'm not okay with is following you in your journey. Um, um, why do you teach me how to make that makeup? And then in a year or in two years, you've completely transformed your life and you have a car and you're taking me on a house tour and you have a beautiful house and you've not shown me how you got there. So I decided to take, it, to take these topics, these uh, pertinent topics that were not being had on a lifestyle platform and turn my Instagram page into an online learning center. I was learning and while I learn, I'm taking my audience with me. So that's in essence how the Just Ivy and the Movers movement literally really started, yeah. I'm going to start on a flip side that people normally don't really think about. Good content creation starts with um, the who you're creating the content creation. You, who, the who you're creating the content for um, in two ways. So the, your audience, what does your audience uh, resonate with? What do they want to hear? What do they relate to? Um, so it starts with there. The people who are giving you the money to create this content, let's say you have a brand partnership or you have someone who's funding your content, what do they expect from me? What is the brief? What are their pictures of success? What are your key performance indices? Once you understand that, then you can move into you creating high quality content. I keep insisting, guys, in the age of technology, you need to be able to stand out. It's okay, you can create something nice and beautiful from your phone, but what's the quality behind that? And that's not just quality of production, but quality of thinking behind the idea, quality of the strategy behind the thinking of the, con of the content. Um, and then finally, once you've put it out, good content. You, have you ever heard the, the saying, you can be the right package at the wrong door? 
So you can be creating this beautiful one of content, but you're on the wrong platform. So people are not ready to hear what it is that you have to say or you've posted at the wrong time. So there's all that thinking that goes behind it. Then finally, when it's out there, what's the feedback that you've received? Is it good? Is it bad? If it's bad, what can you do to change and to improve? And then content creation is consistent. Good content creation is consistent. I will see you on Monday. I will see you on Wednesday. I will see you on Friday. And I can look forward to seeing you finally got good, great, actually great content has great impact. The other thing is, do I consider myself an influencer? I, I with, with it, the common terminology, I guess, you know, but I prefer the term thinkfluencer and I prefer the term entrepreneur. Uh, nowadays, I don't necessarily even introduce myself as an influencer or content creator. I say I'm a business person because it is a business that I am running by putting myself in front of the camera regularly and answering questions and selling products and selling services. So I am in the business of influence. Let me say it like that. My first partnership came through Over25. It was a cab company and I got that work uh, for the company for Over25 by simply getting into that cab seeing them, I'm in, I'm in a camp and tagging them. I did not, it was not rocket science. So that's the first thing I learned. It's not rocket science. It's, it's not. I think that's a simple answer based on the story I've told you. It's not rocket science. You don't have to overthink this industry at all. Yeah. And there are people who watch you. You never know. Just do you because at the end of the day, there are people watching. Whether you think they're watching or not, whether you want them to watch or not, there are people watching what it is that you're doing and yeah. No, I think the biggest aha moment for me was uh, when Money Monday blew up a couple of years ago and I was just doing the thing I had been doing for weeks on end, you know, just asking guys up money question. And that's the time I, I told guys, I asked guys, uh, um, how much do you make? What, what do you do and how much do you make? And I blew up. So my aha moment was, my God, one, people don't talk about salaries. They're not open. So I was the first person to do it. Two, people don't talk about this on Instagram. I was the first person to do it. And three, consistency is beautiful because I just kept doing it and people were watching. Um, and when it's your moment, it's your moment. And the winner is Just Ivy. Give it up for Just Ivy Africa. And this goes to Just Ivy Africa. And I'm gonna give a standing ovation to this award. Like we said, this award was across all the pulse markets, that is Nigeria, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, and Uganda. And we have Just Ivy. Give it up for Just Ivy. Actually, she's Just Ivy Africa. Yes. I felt very validated. Um, the first thing I did was change my bio, for example. Second thing is I increased my red card. I'm an award winner now, so. Hmm. Um, and then especially the one and then I, I think it also just proved to me that I am going in the right direction because when I got the one for uh, the most innovative and it was a Pan-African award and had literally just rebranded to just Ivy Africa from just Ivy maybe even not too long before I got that award I, I felt like the universe was telling me you're going in the right direction so keep going double down double down keep going yeah I've always felt bigger than Kenya and let me please put this very co correctly I love my country I've been to not too many countries but I've been to a few and guys Kenya is magnificent it's beautiful it's just a beautiful beautiful place there's no place like home um but in not traveling to other countries I felt aligned with a bigger picture and that bigger picture was Africa so while doing my money Monday stories and doing my financial literacy content I spoke to a lot of women and a lot of young people in other countries and there was a lot of similarities in their stories and a lot of similarity in the fact that they had no voice. No one was saying these stories, no one was putting them on the map, nobody was talking about this. So I was just like, maybe Kenya was a good place for me to start and a good place for me to practice. What if I thought big, because I'm very, very big on thinking huge, what if I thought bigger and said, how can I bring African stories around money together and and go that way so the first thing i did was to change my name so i could put my brain in the position to do what it is that i need to do i did not i did have a strategy actually that i wrote in just before the name change um i, I did write it down uh you know dreams a lot when you have a dream and you don't note it down that's a problem so i did write it down then when i finally did it i did it and it's also a way to hold me accountable um um to the continent 
by the time you have the word Africa next to your name, you have a very huge responsibility. So I wanted to hold myself accountable to make sure I do what it is that I want to do. Three things that the finance industry has taught me. Um, there's so much, um, there needs to be more transparency. <laughs> There needs to be so much more transparency. It's, it's, not, it's not as difficult as they make you think, yet it's also not as easy as they make you think. So there's just a lot of transparency that can be brought about by people doing their own due diligence. Um, there's a lot to discover out there. The other thing I've learned is it's very, very, very easy to make money. Very easy. The difficulty is in keeping it and growing it. I've seen that from so many people that I've spoken to. People have are making millions out here. Keeping it is um, the problem. Um, and then, of course, finally, and I say this a lot, that uh, sometimes the finance industry teaches you that it's not necessarily only about your finances. If you have yourself in order, you yourself are working on yourself. You'll be shocked that the money will flow with you. So I think off the top of my head, that's what I say this industry has taught me. My name is just Ivy Africa. Paul's business influencer and Paul's most innovative influencer of the year 2022. Feel free to go to all my platforms across all social media, follow Just Ivy Africa and do the same for Paul's Life Kenya because more beautiful conversations are coming your way.